Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and one of the things people are surprised to hear from me basically every time I tell them is that I use Vivaldi for my browser at work. So at home I use Safari mostly because I like the simplicity and I need something that syncs really well between my iPhone, iPad, and Mac. But at work, I need something that's fast, customizable, and can just kind of work exactly how I work. And Vivaldi gives me the base functionality that I need, plus a ton of customization options to get exactly what I want while I'm working, and that's really valuable to me during my day job. Surprisingly to me, one of the more popular videos I've ever made is where I talked about some of the things I like about Vivaldi and why I thought it was maybe the best browser you've never used. Um, that's a good video kind of going over a lot of the stuff about Vivaldi. This video is just going to look at what they released in the version 5 update they just shipped a couple days ago. Um, basically, this update revolves around themes, around translations, and downloads. And so we're going to take a look at those three features, and yeah, let's take a look. So one of the things I really like about Vivaldi is its ability to do themes. So if I go into the themes section of the settings of the app, you can see a bunch of built-in ones, and you've always had these. I think they've modified the list a little bit over time, but like we've got the beach one here with an image in the background and everything. But you can always edit these. Uh, so if I go into the editor, which has been redesigned for version 5, I can change the colors. So maybe instead of this green, I want it to be bluer. So let's do something kind of like that, and it updates in real time as you do it. Um, the highlight, which you can kind of see here, um, let's make this more of like a dark pink sort of thing. There we go. Kind of digging that. You can tweak these a little bit. You can like change the contrast of the UI. You can kind of see that changing as you slide it around. Um, yeah, you can take the accent from the page or not. So for example, on my website, I have an accent color set, so it sets that to purple, whereas BuzzFeed goes back to uh, red. Uh, this one uses the default because there isn't one on it. So you can kind of see the tabs changing. Some people like that. Some people hate that. Uh, so you can turn that off. So accent from the page, turn that off. Now when I go, it's always blue for my tab color. So it's consistent. So I can do that. Um, I can change the background image to any of these kind of pre-built ones, or I can select one from my uh, desktop. I can change it to a specific color if I'd like. Um, and then I can change some settings. So if I kind of go back here and go to this beach one, for example, you can see the image is crisp here and then it's faded or it's blurred out, I should say, at the top. That's set by this blur slider. So if I set it to zero, then it's crisp, but it's kind of hard to read. Uh, so I can blur it however much I want so that the tabs are easy to read. Or if I don't want to see that, I just want to see color, let's do that. And now we have my background color for the app showing up there. Um, so yeah, that's a... Uh, all pretty nice. I can change the rounding so I can make these like super round. I can make them really uh, kind of cut off uh, hard edges. I kind of like something around six is pretty good for me. Um, but yeah, you can make these changes. Uh, you can export the theme. So if you export, you can just export it and then share it with yourself if you want to install it on a different computer or you can share it with other people. You can open a theme. So if you have a theme file, you can open it here. And then there's get more themes as well, which is a new thing. They have this basically themes directory with a whole bunch of different looks for Vivaldi. So if I go to like the popular list and let's just grab like, let's grab this 11 one. It's the most popular one right now. So you can see uh, who it was made by. Uh, we'll download the theme and then we'll install it, right? And so it's already installed, it's good to go. And this isn't maybe the one for me, but you can kind of uh, just kind of see if it works for you. And so it's on my list uh, and kind of the same way as before, I can edit it. So maybe I want this to be uh, kind of a more pink color or a brighter color, I should say, we'll make the accent um, a lot lighter, kind of like that, right? Make it a little bluer. Um, you know, you can tweak to your heart's content, but basically you can download one as a starting point and then tweak it however you'd like. So that's the updates to themes. Let me go back to, uh, we'll go back to just the default Vivaldi theme for the rest of this, uh, just so it's easier to check out. So that's theming, uh, what's changed there. Um, if we go ahead and go to uh, this page, so I'm on the Brazilian version of BuzzFeed, uh, and basically Vivaldi recently added translations, so you can translate the entire page if you'd like. That's super easy to do. Um, but they've also added this new item to the sidebar for translation, and basically what you can do here is you can copy any text, I'll just grab something from here, and it will translate it into your local language. You can uh, make it whatever you'd like it to translate into, uh, but these um, this can happen just really easily for you. Uh, I actually have auto-translate selected text enabled, so what I can do is I can just like select parts of the page, it'll automatically translate for me, or I could just uh, you know type something in. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna type here, but uh, yeah, I'll just type like that hit translate, and so if I want to just use this as a translator instead of like going to Google and trying to translate or something else, it's just built into Vivaldi, so that's kind of cool. 
Honestly, what you probably still wanna do is just use the full page translation, and that works pretty well uh, all on its own. So that's what's new in translations in uh, Vivaldi 5. And we have one more thing to look at. So uh, let me close this tab and this tab. And now I'm on uh, Digital Foundry where I can download a video, and this is a new download UI thing, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is go to this latest video, which I wanna download and I'm going to download the H.264 version of it. And so we're gonna hit download. And what you previously had for Vivaldi and download management, you just had this over here in the sidebar, but people don't always like the sidebar. They kind of like something up here, more like Safari or Edge. And so now you have that up here. And what you also get is this kind of graph over here for like how quick is the download going? Is it consistent? Is it slowing down? Is it totally stopped? So that's really nice to have. You get the URL and like when it started and everything. So. Um, it looks like it actually disconnected, so I have no idea why that is. Um, if I hit restart, does that do anything? Oh, I re reloaded the page, um, so it's just trying to download it again. But um, not sure why this download is didn't work the first time, but um, I was able to see really quickly on the graph that, hey, it just went straight to zero, um, and now it's downloading again at a high speed, so hopefully that'll work. Um, I'm also using like iStat menus to track this system-wide, but if you don't have that or just would like to see kind of like the progress of your download and like the history of the speed, uh, that you're getting from it. You get that in this downloads thing. You also get search. You can also sort by different things. So uh, there's a little more power here as you'd expect from Vivaldi than most browsers. Um, but I thought that was kind of a notable update. And yeah, that's all that's new in version five. It's totally free. Um, so you can just check it out, see if it uh, works for you. But yeah, if you haven't tried Vivaldi, I do recommend at least trying it. It's not going to work for everyone. It's definitely more fiddly than your average browser. Like if I go into like tabs, like look at all this you can configure for tabs. And this may be insane. You may look at this and be like, I would never want to do that. But Vivaldi gives you the power to do that. And it's just like, it's this across everything. There's so many options to do basically everything. You can set up custom keyboard shortcuts for everything, mouse gestures, like I mean, look at the privacy options here. Like there's a billion things. So that's why I think Vivaldi is good for work because I can really configure it to exactly what I want. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'll see you here next time on A Better Computer.